been used by God, who has gifted her by his spirit, to declare his truth. She's a prophet. No exceptions to the gifts, people. Male, female. She's speaking his word. Now, I love the contrast. Some commentators are a bit off with Simeon because they basically paint him as an old priest who goes, Oh, thank God for that, my job is done. He looks at the baby and he goes, Oh, you promised me, Lord, that I wouldn't die before I've seen the Messiah, the chosen one of God, the anointed one. He recognised God's fulfilled his promises in his baby and he goes, Now I can die. Take me now. I think that's what I mean, actually, because if you do read the Simeon story, and I hope it intrigues you enough to go back and fill in the gap, the <laughs> Simeon does go on to say some powerful words, and he makes a prophecy to Mary that is a very powerful one, which she would have had to live with the rest of her life, and then see it come to fruition. Intrigued? Read it for yourself in Luke 2. But I think this wonderfully little brief story about Anna shows a truth about prophecy. See, prophecy is not just looking back and, and it's not just saying that this is what God said. And it's not just about living that now, a, a, a kind of call to look, this is what God said, so this is how we should live. Now, that's part of the whole thing. Preaching, by the way, is a form of prophecy. But actually, what does she do? Let's just go back and remind us of this. She began to give thanks to God, but something shifts. And to speak about a child to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Who was waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem when she was alive? Every single Jew. Not just the holy ones, supposedly, who were bothered to come and preach and worship, uh, sorry, pray and worship him. Not just those in the temple, like Anna and Simeon. No, 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 no. Every single Jew would commit to the Day of Atonement. Because deep in the heart of every single Jew was this desperate desire for everything to be put right. And I believe most that every single human being has this seed in their heart, this sense that things are right. And they know it, and you know it, and your neighbours know it, your family know it. Everybody knows it. Where you work, everyone knows it, deep, deep down. This isn't how it's meant to be, somehow. This DNA that we have as children of God is there in all of us. And people run after all sorts of solutions to this disconnect that is in all of us. We realise there's a disconnect. Something is right. We want redemption. We want salvation. We want good news. We want things to be right with God, our maker, but we won't necessarily all use those words. That is what Anna decided to devote the rest of her life to. <laughs> to getting out there, beginning with the people around her, who she knew, well, they were in the temple, so she would assume they were looking for the redemption of his earth. But she knew she had to get out and tell people, because God has done it. God's done it. The prophetic partly sees what God has already done and is doing, how that is going to unfold. He fulfills his promises and his purposes unfold before us. People needed to know that. I love it. I absolutely love it because it tells me, as it's like the old lady, that God's purpose still unfolds in me. It tells me, as someone who's engaged in the prophetic, in preaching, in teaching, 
in evangelizing and missioning and witnessing and pastoring and shepherding and caring and occasionally picking people at the bottom. It tells me that I still have people to reach. People to remind this, this, this baby we're all going to be celebrating in a few weeks' time. It's Christmas. Jolly, jolly, jolly. This baby is God's answer to your deepest need. Whether you're a single mum, an ancient old crumbly lady, you still have work for God to do. Now, here's the challenge. Twofold. In the story, we have this beautiful, and I'm stealing this shamelessly from the preacher yesterday. You have the young. God does new stuff, and he often does new stuff through young people, and we old people have to get over it. Yeah. We have to get over it. Over it. We have to look for God in it. We have to get the old person with the riches of experience. How many promises have we seen God fulfill in our lifetimes? Right? Go and Google God's promises. If you sit here and think, he's not fulfilling promises to me, I can tell you, he's here. So he's fulfilling one of his promises. I will never leave, abandon, or forsake you. I am here. I've put people around you to speak God's truth to you, which I promised I would do. I am here this morning, speaking to you through this woman in front and through the songs of Thank you, beautiful songs. Through so all of that, he's speaking to you. But we have a task to help the new unfold. And the younger people need to appreciate the experience and the wisdom of the old because they are bringing to birth something new. And we are those entrusted with blessing it, explaining it, enthusing about it, sharing it. Lord, we pray for our young people. In the culture of the church, as anyone under 50, <laughs> we pray for our youth project, a time of great transition, 18 years old. This month. We pray for this school, <coughs> for the children and families connected to connect and play. We are birthing new things and we still have a role to play in it. Isn't that an amazing truth? <laughs> it is absolutely. Glorious, and we thank God for it. We thank God for Anna, one of the six very first witnesses to God's saving grace in Jesus Christ. And God indeed did fulfill his promise to give her grace, to be merciful to her, and to favour her. She got to see heaven touch her. The fulfillment of prophecy and promise and the unfolding of God's purposes for the future. An ordinary woman 